Hi Bumblebees, it's Ethany. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be sharing with you how I spiritually cleanse my space. I carry out my ritual for space cleansing at least every four to six weeks and I do this in my living and workspace which just happened to be pretty much the same thing. Now it's no surprise that I need to do this quite regularly as I do a lot of magic, a lot of energy work, a lot of tarot readings, all that sort of jazz in my space. Things do tend to get a little bit Casper the Friendly Ghost around my apartment, meaning lights begin to go on and off and things get tipped over or knocked off of places and I don't have a cat. So I tend to have to have very stern words with the spirits and then I know it's time to just cleanse everything and give it a bit of a reset energetically. You don't have to wait for any specific moon phase or moon cycle to do this. It's really at any time and as needed. And this is just my personal preference. You do not need all of the tools that I show here. These are things that I've collected. So I may have started with just one thing when I started my craft, but now I do a whole full blown ritual. So as with everything that I share, simply take what resonates with you and simply leave the rest. And now I'm gonna go through all my tools and then each step of the process. So the first thing that I'm gonna show you is my drum. This is a Celtic drum called a Budran. Um, I'm probably saying that wrong. I can't speak Gaelic. You can use any drum. You can use a little bongo drum. What I love about drumming is that it feels like to me that it pushes and expands the space. Drumming is a lovely earth elemental magic as well. And it's a really wonderful way to shake free any dross or any stagnant energy in a space. I also use a feather or a fan uh, to push smoke through a space and it is a way to represent the element of air in a ritual. So please make sure you're ethically sourcing your feathers. And this is what I use for pushing through smoke. So I've got some black tourmaline and you're gonna see what I'm gonna do with this black tourmaline is grid it on the doors and windows. I have got my bell from the Witch's Moon box and I use that to cleanse the space. Bells are a, another vibration that helps shake up energy and move it around. Whereas the drum is this lower base root chakra sort of energy, the bell is a higher vibration energy. So it really brings those two together to help disperse the energy and cleanse it. Now I'm gonna be using this wand that was made uh, for me from a friend, thank you Carla. Uh, and I'm gonna be using this to put sigils and to put protective symbols in the space as well. You don't have to use a wand, you can use your index finger, um, you can use an athame, whatever you like. I brought these two today. I always use, this, use the smudge off spray. This is by Michelle, who is a witch and a very good friend of mine. Um, great for people who can't do smoke ceremonies or can't use smoke in their places. And it's also a way to represent water as an element in your cleansing rituals. I have my candle to light my smoke and I have my shell, which is my fireproof <laughs> uh, little container. And I have lots of beautiful bundles in here. I've got white sage, I have Palo Santo and one that has got sage, rose and lavender. And I use these to represent earth, fire and air in the ritual and the shell is also for water. And then we've got all of the elements. So I use sage and palo santo together for a good reason. So sage cleanses and wipes free the energy of a space. So what it's gonna do is gonna remove any type of energy that is around. It's gonna completely blank slate it. And the palo santo is gonna bring in that really beautiful um, aromatic um, sacred energy uh, from that wood. So I always replace it with something. If you're ever using sage, make sure you're putting something else in your, either your bundle or you're putting something else in the air afterwards because you want to replace what you have removed with something positive. So whether that's lavender or rose or whatever it may be. So those are my tools. So now I'm going to walk you through how to do a ritual cleansing or at least how I do one. The first thing I do is physically clean my space. So I have a lot of things. I love a lot of, I have a lot of altars and all that sort of stuff. So 
but I like to make sure it is not messy. It is at least put back in its place and that things are as tidy and clean as possible because a good physical clean also helps shift the energy in your room and living environment. The second thing I do is I call in my guides and my beings of light and any ancestors or angels or anything you want to call in to your space to aid you. So to do that, I'm just going to close my eyes. I call in now my spirit guides, my higher self and beings of light to assist me in this ritual cleansing. Be with me now and stand at the doorway of my soul. Bring in the light and protect me. So mote it be. You can say whatever you like to do. If you have a protection prayer, you can use that. It's just basically a formal invitation for your guides to come in and help you out. So the third step is I'm going to light my power center and my sage. Sage is going to really burn. <laughs> it's going, you only need a little bit and your Palo Santo is going to take a little bit more time and may go out a lot quicker. So I'm just gonna light her. Okay, so once you have these really going, you're gonna take your, your, uh, your feather and you're going to start to move through and direct the smoke. I try to get it down low, up high, as much as I can into the um, higher spaces, the cracks and creases, anywhere where you've been sitting by your computer, um, all that sort of stuff. So I'm just going to, so you wanna do this absolutely everywhere in your space. And you can chant or if you have an elemental blessing you want to say, but usually I just get into a rhythm. And obviously we're using the beings of wood, earth and air and fire with reverence and respect. And as you can see, we don't have a lot of smoke, so you may need to go back. That's why I highly recommend having a candle burning and not just using a lighter. She will go out. And honestly, if you're doing this in a whole apartment like I do, it's going to take a bit of time. Do that all around the space and then you pop this into the fireproof container, whether that is your shell or your cauldron. So now I'm going to bell. I'm gonna go from high to low vibration. So all the way up from the bells to shake everything up and then the drums to drum it out. So we're gonna grab our bell and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna walk the space and we're gonna bell into it. Now what I find really interesting is sometimes the bells can sound like they're off key and that's because you're shifting a vibration. So we're just gonna go around and bell. You can bell the directions. I also recommend you bell into any cupboards or crevices or walking closets or anywhere where energy can get stuck because energy in a corner will definitely have nowhere to go. Um, I also put crystals hanging from the ceiling in a lot of places where there's um, a, not a lot of light or a lot of uh, flow because you want to make sure that any light that goes in there can be bounced off of something. Um, but belling into those little corners in your space is really important. I also take extra care and time to bell or sage or drum where I sleep. So especially over the pillows, because that is where you're spending a lot of your mental time when you're dreaming, when you're on your phone and you can't sleep, whatever it may be. Take the time to really honor those spaces because they are so sacred. You astrally travel, you dream, you, you know, there's a lot that goes on in those spaces to so make sure you're shifting that energy up as much as you possibly can. And that's why I have things like my salt lamps and my altar and my crystals by my bed. So. Did you hear that? That was off. So it sounded completely different as we walked around the room. So now we've belled. And my goodness, 
is that Bell not just absolutely stunning? We are going to drum. Probably driving. I always feel like whenever I do this, I drive my neighbors nuts. <laughs> but guys, I'm like shifting the energy. I'm doing you all a blink and favor. So now we're just gonna drum. Now, if I was able to do it really loud, I would, but I'm not gonna try to disturb everybody. So I'm just gonna do it really gently, but normally I give it a really friggin' good thumping. Like I love drumming, um, love drumming. So I drum into everything again, drum over your pillows, drum over your workspaces, drum over your sinks if you've been feeling like things have been draining away from you. Make sure you do all of this into your showers and all that sort of stuff. Obviously not while the shower is on, but get really into those spaces. Don't neglect anything if you're gonna be doing a really heavy cleanse. Feels odd not thumping the crap out of this, I've got to admit. <laughs> Give it a good drumming uh, and make sure you're, you're taking the time there. Now we're going to spray. And as I mentioned, we're honoring the elements of water and air. You can also make your own if you don't have the ability to get something. Use a sprig of rosemary, some water, spring water is best, and three pinches of salt. And use the rosemary to stir the salt in and you can use that and flick that around as well as a way if you can't get a hold of this or use dip your fingers in and splash it around. That's a really very quick holy water and it will also honor the water spirit. So then we go around and just smells so good. I honestly, this is, this smudge off is a stocking stuffer I give absolutely everybody because it's just the best. Like if I'm having an off day filming or writing or whatever it is, I use this all the time. So then I would do every room, again, taking care with where I'm placing it. And then I would do my second one exactly in the same way. So now I'm going to sigil seal the space. So I do this in every doorway, every window, every door, any opening. Um, and I do this with my wand. And all I'm going to do is go up to a space, draw, a pentagram in the sky or a pentacle and say only love may enter here so mo to be you can do something more elaborate if you would wish but this i have found to be really really effective and you are commanding only love may enter into your space and it's something that i've done for a really really long time um, and it is a really wonderful way to seal off your space so i'm just going to go over to this window and do the same thing. So if we're gonna go to the window and you can do every window or you can just basically stand right in the middle. <laughs> Only love may enter here, so mote it be. So do that in every window, every opening, every door and you have sealed your space. So finally to seal off the space and to finish the cleansing, I use a little bit of blue tack, we used to call it in Australia, like you who tack or whatever you guys call it here in North America. And I place some black tourmaline over the doors or windows. So I'm just going to show you on this door, sorry, on this window, you can put them on the floor and on the top, but because I have a dog um, who will like eat it, I use this <laughs> the little glue tack and I would simply put it on this side and this side and if this was a door you would place it on the top of the archways so when anyone walks into your space they are walking through a grid of black tourmaline and what that will do is it will remove any ickies any hitchhikers energetic hitchhikers stress you know they might have had a bad conversation on the phone um, and when they walk into the room they are getting a lot of that taken away because you formed a grid so again, you put them at the top of your door and then the bottom of your door. 
if you have pets like me, you might have to just do it at the top, but again, they're walking through it so it's not a problem. Um, and I find this to be a really, really great way to finally seal off your space and make it something that is a nice pleasure for you to have people walk into. Finally, I would thank my guides and my beings of light for assisting me in the ritual. I always close out and thank anything that has come to help me because it's just really good manners. <laughs> um, we all like to be thanked for our assistance. So I would again, I thank my spirit guides and beings of light for their assistance in this ritual today. Go if you must, stay if you like, with love, hail and farewell. And then we've said thank you. Now, if I'm in a rush and I can't do the entire ritual, I will bring in my guides, I will do the smoke. So we're doing earth, fire and air with the smoke. I will do the spray, water and air, and I will do maybe like a drum, the drumming or the sealing off. You can mix and match these, but I always try to make sure that I'm honoring each element in the space and I'm at least being very mindful and keeping my intentions really clear as to what I'm doing. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, and I would love to hear what your practices are for clearing your space. And I would really love it if you could let me know in the comments below what you do to cleanse your space. And I will see you all next time.